I just heard a door. <laughs> That's creepy. There's nobody here. But a door definitely just closed over there. Can't park there, mate. Oh, sh that probably shouldn't be hanging down like that. I get the Vegas itch. Not that Vegas itch. The, the, the itch to go to Vegas. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. Unfortunately, you find me here in, I believe, Hesperia. I'm not exactly sure with the hood of my truck up in the car park to an auto zone. Luckily though, nothing's wrong. I just have to quickly change the air filter. I'm about to do a long drive through the desert and the light just came on on my dash to say, change the air filter. So being the responsible truck owner that I am, I've pulled in, grabbed a spare air filter and we're gonna install that in a minute. But as you've seen by the title of this video, the mission today is to make the drive to Vegas not suck. Now I'm very fortunate, I only live about 250 miles away from the glorious Las Vegas, Nevada, which is a bucket list destination for a lot of people. When I lived back in the UK, the only experience I had of Las Vegas was what I saw on the movie The Hangover, where it looks pretty crazy. Now, Vegas definitely can be crazy, it can also be mellow, you can kind of make it whatever you want. But what you can't really do is make the drive from LA or Orange County, where I'm coming from, out to Vegas, look as exciting as it does in the movies. When you see them in the hangover and they drive out in that convertible Mercedes and they're having a great time and they're on those big long desert roads, it looks pretty fun. In reality, it's kind of boring. So today, as I do have to go to Vegas because we're shooting something really cool tomorrow out there. Oh my God. I wanted to go and stop off at different places along the way and see just how exciting we could make it. And that is gonna involve a little bit of off-roading as well, which is another reason why I wanna get this air filter done. So let me get this done, let's get on the road and let's see if we can make the drive to Las Vegas not suck. installed and we are already seeing an extra two miles per gallon increase which doesn't sound like a lot but when you're only getting 16 17 miles to the gallon every little helps especially on a long trip like this typically this trip would take about four hours i have done it in less and i've also done it in a lot lot longer with traffic but that is about your average time and so you can just book it through straight and get to vegas and enjoy yourself once you get there because honestly it's a lot of desert and a lot of just straight cruise control on music turned up podcast on whatever and that's basically it but we are going to break up this trip because i want to show you some cool things that you can do along the way if you've never done this trip before some of them i have done before in previous videos but some of them i definitely haven't so there is going to be some new stuff in here if you're an og subscriber and if you're new here welcome to the channel give me a little subscribe down below if you may that would be lovely i'd love to see you here again uh, but the first place we're going to go to is an abandoned water park that was built in, I believe, the 70s, and there was a death, and that closed it, and now it's haunted, and we're gonna go to it, and it's literally right there. It might not be haunted, but it sounds cooler for the video. So welcome to Lake Dolores Water Park, or Rockahula Water Park, or I think even there was a Discover or Discovery Water Park it got turned into, but basically what you're looking at is the remains of a 70-year-old water park that originated over there as essentially just a lake with a campsite. And then over 25 years, they started to add in slides and attractions and all kinds of things. Uh, then it went down in popularity in the 80s. It ended up getting closed down at the end of the 80s. It was reopened again, early 90s. And that's when it was called the Rockahula Water Park. So it was like a 1950s theme. Uh, so there's not really much left standing. Everything has been graffitied over. Uh, and then it was open then from the 90s into the early 2000s where unfortunately one of the workers here 
decided to go on a slide that wasn't turned on, so there wasn't any water in the runout lane at the bottom. But he instructed another member of staff to turn on the water slide so that he could go down it. I believe this was before the park had opened for the day. The other worker turned it on, he went down the water slide, and unfortunately, like I said, there wasn't enough water at the bottom, and he ended up crashing. Now, I said that I thought there was a death. He actually didn't die, but he was rendered paraplegic, so he was paralyzed from it. Sued the water park company for $4.4 million, and then I believe the park closed down not long after that. So, this place has had a very tumultuous history, and it's kind of eerie being here now. So this right here, this is where the slides would have come down. Now I'm not sure which slide it was that the guy had the accident on, but basically all of these supports up here and those towers is where you would have started out and then it would have snaked its way around. And then these are the runoff ponds in the bottom. This was obviously a lazy river that now looks like a pretty cool go-kart track. And then all of this in the middle, I don't remember being burnt out like that. There's also another burnt out structure there. So I feel like there's been some fires here since even the last time that I checked it out. But it is just this kind of crazy place that you see off the side of the freeway. If you are gonna come here, I know it's run down, I know it's dilapidated, but treat it with respect. Don't come here and litter. Don't come here and, I mean, I'm sure if you did some graffiti, no one's gonna notice, but you know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to put this on the map for people to come and make it even more run down than it is. Come here, enjoy it for what it is, and uh, yeah, definitely make it a stop on your way into Las Vegas. Do I dare walk on this? I'm gonna walk in the middle because that's where the support is. So yeah, this is obviously where there would have been like a beach access into the lazy river. Isn't it weird to think that 20 years ago, this would have been absolutely popping off with people. There would have been people around, slides would have been running. And now just look at it, just left out here to rot in the middle of the desert. Clearly this is where all of the shops and restaurants and things are. Obviously you've got your entry turnstiles here. So this fence would have come all the way around, I would guess. And this would have been your way in and out. Nice big fountain here, maybe a gift shop over there. And then this oasis in the desert, lovely palm trees. I mean, they're hanging on for dear life, but I don't imagine they get too much water out here now. If you're interested in finding out more about this place, go and Google uh, Lake Dolores Water Park or Rockahula Water Park. And there is some footage of this from back when it was all in operation. They actually had a stand-up slide where you'd basically run and then stand up, slide on your feet and hold onto the rails and that's how you would get down and then it would just eject you out. There's also like a zip line where you just held on and then it just catapulted you into the lake at the end. So um, it maybe was a little bit of a health and safety nightmare even in the beginning. Um, but yeah, definitely cool to see some of that vintage stuff. Here, let me take you into one of these buildings. Oh, it's kind of eerie in here though. So yeah, not a lot left. I'm sure that's probably got asbestos in it, so we won't be in here too long kicking up too much dust. But just every inch of the place is covered in graffiti. I think I just heard a door. It sounded like a door just closed. <laughs> that's creepy, there's nobody here. But a door definitely just closed over there. Okay, maybe this will be the end of our little trip here. <laughs> I'm spooking myself out now. Hello? Hello? It does sound like there's someone here. Maybe this was the door. Yeah, there's nobody else here. It's kind of a cool picture, isn't it, of the truck? So there you have it, Lake Dolores slash Rockahula slash Discover Water Park. Use this as stop number one on your trip. So our next destination is quite possibly the strangest sounding place I've ever heard of. This is the road to Zizix, Z-Z-Y, 
ZX, I believe. It was on the sign that we just went by. And if you've driven to Vegas, undoubtedly you've gone by it and gone, how the bloody hell do you say that place? Well, I have driven by it a million times, but I have never actually gone off at the Zizix turn to see what's there. So I was flying around on Google Maps last night, planning my route out here today. And apparently there is actually in this barren landscape, I mean, this is a dry lake bed in front of us, a huge dry lake bed. Apparently out here, there is actually some hot springs, some mineral springs. So we're just gonna cruise down this road. We've got seven minutes left, and apparently we're gonna end up at a place called Caruso's Fountain. So this then is a dry lake bed, which is insane to imagine this all underwater, especially right now when it's 95 degrees. But once upon a time, twas. And also there are these little patches of reeds and grass and stuff like on the hills behind me. So clearly there is still some water underneath that these guys are feeding on because there's a little patch there, there's one over there. And then on the aerial shots, I can see where we're headed, which apparently is like an actual little mineral pool. But yeah, I had no idea, absolutely no clue that this existed. Every time I'm out in a place like this, I always go back to thinking about the original people that discovered it on horseback with wagons. And I just think, what on earth were they doing? Why didn't they stay somewhere like where it was a little bit cooler? Because can you imagine if there was no roads or anything here, and then you just get to a bit and you've got this massive bloody mountain and it's like, oh, guess we've got to get to the other side. Otherwise we're gonna die of thirst or dysentery or both. I would not be cut out for those days. I'm a very well-equipped uh, adventure type person, but sod that, I'll take my air conditioning and my nice truck fridge and my cold water any day. Welcome to the Desert Studies Center. Scientists and students from around the world visit this California State University field station on the edge of the Soda Dry Lake to learn about the Mojave Desert. So this is way bigger than I thought. So this here, uh, so if we walk up there, there's like loads of buildings and stuff. But look at this, this is a big pond here. So we'll go and check that out. So I was just saying, imagine what this was like when the lake was full. Well, apparently there was stuff in that lake in 1908 because they used to uh, extract or distill the brine and get soda from it. And then they would use it in like baking products, cleaning products, caustic soda, all that kind of stuff. And then there was a rail line that would go from here all the way through to the mining towns like uh, BT Nevada or BT, I always forget how you pronounce it. And so they used to ship the, uh, the ore, the cargo, passengers, and then also the soda from here out that way to be sold. It is strange, isn't it, to think that you come out into the desert where it's so arid and you just don't think that anything could exist out here and that, you know, anything would really be worthwhile doing. But there's whole industries that have built up and then disappeared. So here's a fun fact that I didn't learn until I moved to California. That there, that's a palm tree. Now, obviously you've seen palm trees before, but this skirt is actually made up of all of the dead palm fronds. So as the new palm fronds grow, the lower ones start to die off. And if you don't trim them, if you don't cut them off, if they don't fall off in the wind, they create these skirts. And some of the ones that I've seen go all the way down to the ground. Which is crazy because you think of palm trees as just being like, you know, the nice skinny things with the green palm fronds on the top. But actually in their natural form, they're kind of quite ugly looking, especially with this shaggy bit. And here you go. Here is a soda spring in the middle of the desert. <laughs> like arid barren luxury. So apparently this also used to be a religious health retreat as well. So I imagine that there were some healing properties in the mineral water here. And so people would come out and, I don't know, find God and find health and hopefully find some air conditioning because it's hot. So if you look just there, that is an old diving board. So you could go swim in there. Not gonna lie though, the water does look a bit brown. I don't know that I want to swim in it. Can't park there, mate. Skipping a jump away from Zizix is the world's largest thermometer here at Baker. 
And that isn't my only favorite thing here in Baker. I also love a little place called Alien Jerky, which we're gonna go to next. Not because I like eating dehydrated aliens, but because they have an amazing selection of hot sauces, and I do love a good hot sauce. But yeah, if you've ever wondered about what the world's largest thermometer looks like, that is it. So I have so much hot sauce at the moment, so I'm limiting myself to only one bottle of hot sauce from this place. But I did come here, I forget which video it was. I came and checked this place out. They're actually building an alien hotel. So uh, this is their alien pretzel stand, which isn't open right now. But this is the mothership. <laughs> And this apparently is going to be a full-blown hotel, resort, and everything. They've got some more buildings back there that they've done. They've made a lot of progress since the last time I was here. None of this structure was up. I think they had only just about done that one down the back. That is the uh, Alien Hotel. And this is Alien Fresh Jerky. Well, $23 later, and we got ourselves a Kaboom Ballistic Hot Sauce, four million Scovilles, and then Melinda's Creamy Style Ghost Pepper Wing Sauce. So the reason why I went with the Kaboom is not just because it's four million Scovilles, but also because it has on it a uh, rifle round bottle opener, and that has to do with what we're gonna do tomorrow, which will be next week's episode for you guys. So stay tuned to that. There you go, guys. So we're off the freeway. The freeway is right there, and this here is actually Las Vegas Boulevard, but as you can see, not the Las Vegas Boulevard that has all of the casinos on it yet. That's about another probably 50 odd miles that way. The next one we're going to is a little bit more touristy than the other ones. We basically haven't seen anybody so far. However, here, eh, there's a few people, but there is also, I don't, I can't see on the screen where I'm pointing, but somewhere here, it's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa where I'm not pushing on it, right? Anyway, somewhere in this area, uh, there are seven magic mountains. It's an art exhibition or an art installation done by a Swiss artist, and uh, it's been here since 2016. Apparently to celebrate humans' presence and creativity in the desert. So let's go check them out. So I remember when these popped up, like I said, it was 2016. I didn't see them the first time I drove to Vegas. And then the next time I came, I just kind of glanced over and saw these crazy, like brightly colored blocks. And from the road, you can't see any of the car park or anything else. You don't actually know what they are. They are just these crazy colored rock formations out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, as you can see, we are pretty much on the dry lake bed, the Jean dry lake bed here. Well, there you go. Seven magic mountains. It's actually very cool. It's kind of strange to see this much like vibrant color out here in the desert. Well, like that one, the neon yellow. Also, really love the fact that there's not any graffiti on here. So I don't know if they come up and touch these up every now and again, but that's really nice to see that people haven't come out here and defaced them. Should we do the tourist thing? Okay, come on, let's do it. Let's do it together. All right, you can imagine you're here and we're gonna use the whole selfie stick at full extension, ready? Oh yes, tourists. So now, between here and Las Vegas proper, there's just basically a big old straight road with nothing else really to do. But what there is, that way, is about 40 miles of off-road trails that take you into the backside of Las Vegas. So I figure that rather than take the freeway, why don't we air down the tires, jump on a dirt trail, and go take the path less, what's the word? Less trodden, less walked, the path less traveled. Yeah, that's the one. Bye bye, Magic Mountains. That was fun. So this is where we say goodbye to the asphalt and hello to the gravel. Right now I am still running 50 PSI in the tires though, so we will have to air down and that should hopefully make the ride a little bit more compliant.
All right, definitely bumpy on 50 PSI. So I'm thinking 20 should be fine. And I also have a new toy that I wanna try out that I haven't used yet. This is a four tire inflation slash deflation system. So that I don't have to go around each one and let them all down. I just plug them all in and then hit go and then it'll put them to whatever I like. So let's give it a whirl. So it's a very simple system. You basically have this uh, T-junction right here. One line goes to your front axle, one line goes to your rear axle, and then this one is where you either air up or air down. Obviously, we're gonna be airing down so I don't need the compressor attached. So each one of these goes to a tire, and then you're good to go. We do the short one on that. Oh, yeah, so remember to close your valve, and then you take the long one, And then you get your other side. Easy as that. So right now we're at a 55.7 PSI around all of them. And all we do is pull this. And we're now airing down. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna equalize the pressure in all of the tires. So if there's one that's higher pressure than another one, the air will come out of that one before it comes out of the low pressure tire. So once they all get balanced, it literally deflates them all at the same time. So not only does it save you time, but if you're like me and you have OCD about getting your tire pressures all equal, there is no better way to do it. 42.7. Now, if you are interested in checking out more Flake products, there will be a link in the description below where you can get 10% off, either click the link or just use my code SWORDS. And obviously, I would never recommend a product that I wouldn't spend my own money on. That'll do, 19.4. Another nice thing about this is that when you get it, it's all very neatly wrapped up and has these lovely little ties on. Uh, there's absolutely no chance I'm ever gonna be able to get it back in the bag in that same neat manner, uh, especially out on the side of the trail when it's roasting hot. But you don't need to because they made a bag perfectly big enough so that you can just loosely coil it up and it goes away, which is huge. Cause you guys have probably had that experience where you get a sleeping bag and you pull it out of the case and then you go to put it back in and you just cannot for the life of you get it to fit back in. Well, not with this, so. Thank you for that more flight. So I believe this is what the cool kids refer to as being we out here or something similar. Oh shit. That, uh, that probably shouldn't be hanging down like that. Awesome, roadside repairs. So this is my compressor for my helper bags, which are there. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see, how do we fix this? Okay, uh, zip tie mechanics. That is how we're gonna fix this because by the looks of it, the bolt has rattled clean out. There is no bolts left in it. I don't even know where it was. Where, did it go up on here? Okay, all we need to do is get it attached back up here somehow with zip ties and we're good. That's... <laughs> It's ironic, isn't it? That I'm like, oh, we're out here. Um, and then <laughs> we have to do some repairs. Yeah. Never go anywhere without zip ties. So let's see, how are we gonna do this? Okay, well that's double fixed now. All right, is it pretty? No. Is it up? Yes. We are gonna take some air out of the helper bags though. I forgot to do that, that's my mistake. That's probably why it's been so clattery back here. And um, yeah, we'll just let these guys hang out. I'm not gonna trim those off. Oh my God, I'm so dusty. Look at me, I'm dust man. Cool. <clears throat> okay. So what's funny is I only just put this tool kit together. I went to Harbour Freight and I just bought basically everything that I thought that I might need out on the trail. Um, and it cost about 200 bucks or something. And then I got this cool tool roll. And that was it, job done. If you are gonna come out and do stuff like this, it's always good to be prepared. 
I also have a satellite uh, communicator beacon thing with me as well, so there's no signal out here. So if I did need to get in touch with anybody, then I can still send text messages, send my location, all that good stuff. Better to be safe than sorry. Make sure we're still hanging on. Yep, I don't see it, so that's a good sign. I'll tell you what I do see though, civilization down there in the valley floor. You can just about make out the, uh, the far side of Vegas. So it looks like the trail sneaks around behind this hill here and then goes through onto that flatland and I can see little trails through there. But it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's very easy. The terrain's pretty, uh, pretty simple. There's a few rocks and things to navigate. You can see here where it's smushing into the side of the tires. Isn't it crazy though, how I am only a 30 minute drive from one of, if not the most energetic, fast paced, 24 hours a day, go, go, go cities in all of the world. Yet up here, I am completely and utterly by myself. It's just idyllic. And the temperature right now is amazing. It's about, I don't know, it says 95 in the truck. It's not, it's about 80 and the breeze is nice and the sun is gonna set behind these mountains. So as we're driving in, we're gonna get that sunset. Oh, this is awesome. This is so much better, even though my truck's broken. This is so much better than taking the uh, 30, 40 minute trip along the freeway into the last bit. Now, I know a lot of you guys watching this aren't gonna be able to do this portion of the road trip, especially if you're in like a rental Mustang or something. But for those of you with a 4x4 or an overland vehicle, definitely do this because it's a lot of fun. And it's very easy. The trail is easily found on Onyx off-road as well. So, all right, let's keep going before the sun goes down. And uh, again, I find myself on a trail with the sun going down, looking forward to a nice glass of wine. But this time, this time, I'm gonna get that glass of wine. So I'm now in this forest of Joshua trees. This is a Joshua tree, in case you've never seen one before. And there are lots of them. There it is, Las Vegas on the horizon. We are into the final stretch. Let's keep pushing and we'll be on the strip very soon. sweet two windows go on then i'm actually going to keep the lights off because i want to show this view without reflections so i have two windows this one looks out over the venetian and all of the strip and this one 
looks out even more of all of the strip. Let's kick these off. Oh, that feels good. Ooh, hello feet. Ah, feels good to be here. That trip took almost 12 hours. Now, if you did it the same way that I did it, it wouldn't take you as long because you wouldn't have to stop and film and do everything else. But that is how you make the trip to Las Vegas not suck. I had so much fun today. Got to do some things that I'd never done before. Got to see the Seven Magic Mountains. That was cool. That off-road trail that led into the backside of Las Vegas. That was cool. Honestly, that was kind of nice because when you come to Vegas, it is such a barrage on the senses. And if you've never been before, you have to come. It's amazing. But it is such a barrage on the senses. There's lights, there's sounds, there's smells. There's people everywhere. It's Honestly, it's all the stuff that I normally wouldn't like, but there's just something about it that I do. And every three or four months, I get the Vegas itch, not that Vegas itch, the, the, the itch to go to Vegas. There's just something about it. The energy here is great, I love it. I'm in and out in two or three days, unless it's with SEMA, and then I'll do five days, but I go home absolutely wrecked. So if you've been thinking about doing this trip, you absolutely should. And if you've been wondering whether you should drive or fly, hopefully this video has given you some insight onto what you can do along the way to make that four hour, very long, very boring drive a little bit more exciting. Okay, I'm gonna go and get some food. I am absolutely Hank Marvin. I haven't eaten all day, so I wanna go and get something. Uh, it's already 10 to nine, and I have to be in 12 hours back out in the desert. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Like I said, if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe, because I'd love to see you here again. Most importantly, remember, until next time, don't know anything I wouldn't do. See ya.